chain is taken away. All my pain is healed in His name. I believe you, Lord. I believe. Come on. I raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Well, I know he rescued my soul. His blood covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. All my pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I raise the banner. Lord has conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives, 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 my Redeemer Oh, yeah. Come on. How many of you glad your Redeemer lives this morning? Come on. How many of you glad your Redeemer lives this morning? How many of you glad you're saved today? Come on. If you're saved, you ought to say something. I said if you're saved, you ought to say something. Let me tell you what the Word of God tells us. Psalms 107, one of my favorite psalms. It said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. How many of you know you serve a good God? Come on, don't be quiet on me this morning. How many of you know you serve a good God? Oh, give thanks to the Lord because He is good. For His mercy. Somebody shout mercy. mercy. Come on, somebody shout mercy. mercy. For His mercy endures forever. Aren't you glad you didn't get what you deserved? Uh, I said, aren't you glad you didn't get what you deserved? You deserve to be thrown away. You deserve you deserve judgment. But in the place of that, you got grace and mercy. Aren't you glad for that today? Aren't you glad your, your Redeemer lives? I'm going to tell you something. Because of that grace and that mercy that endures forever, you and I are counted as redeemed. We've been set free. We've been taken care of by the blood of Jesus. And the psalmist said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In other words, if you're a child of God this morning, you ought not lay, stand out there with them hands laying down by your side. You need to get those 10 string instruments out. You need to put them together and let the redeemed of the Lord say something today. My Redeemer lives and I'm thankful today because He lives. I'm going to live also. Come on. Worship the Lord together. Who's my Redeemer lives. 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 He lives. 
Hallelujah. How many this morning have come to the house and you're ready to get to the throne of Jesus? He is ever so faithful to meet us. Amen.
Everything. 
of you know today that you need the Lord. You need Him more every day. You see, there's only one place to be, and that's to be in His presence. You say, well, that's why I come to church. Well, I got news for you. You can be in His presence even when you're at home. Let me tell you what the psalmist said. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Everything that's going on outside, everything that's going on in this world, all the chatter, the chatter and the noise that the enemy's barking at you. You want to get rid of it? Get in the secret place. Abide in His presence. Let this not just be a song, but let this be a proclamation. I need you, Lord, more than the air that I breathe. I want to be in your presence. The songs that we've sang this morning that the worship team has led us in is all about waiting on the Lord, not getting in a hurry. That's our problem. Sometimes we're in such a hurry. We want everything to be done this way, that way. Quick, quick, quick. Let's get it done. Let's get it out. Let's go on with life. But sometimes we need to wait upon the Lord. Sometimes we need to dwell in the secret place. Sometimes we need to give the noise over to God and let Him take care of it for us. If you're here today, I want you to know He's not forgotten you. I said, hey, I want you to know He's not forgotten you. He loves you. He's here. All He's waiting for you to do is just to act like you want Him. Just to cry out to Him. Just to reach out to Him. He's passing, the old song says, by this moment, your need to supply. He's a God that doesn't sleep. He's a God that doesn't slumber. And He's ready for you. I wonder today, if you would just reach, reach your hands up in total surrender and say, Lord, I need you. Come on, sing that again. Lord, I need you. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. I need you more than the air that I breathe. You captured my heart every beat. Come on, I need you, Lord. Lift your voice. Hallelujah. Oh! 
praise you over and over again, yeah. How many feel that this morning? How many of you feel that He's pulling you closer and closer? You know, that's one thing about the Lord. He said, if you'll come after Him, He will no wise cast you out. He will not turn you away. Life sometimes has people in it that will write you off. They'll put you down. They'll turn you away. They'll cast you aside. But here's what God says. He said, I love you with a never-ending love. You got a burden this morning? He said, cast your care upon me, for I care for you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll always walk with you. I'm talking to somebody today. I said, I'm talking to somebody today. I want you to know all he's asking you to do, as I said a moment ago, just make that move towards him. Just open up your heart and let him give to you what he wants to give to you. He will in no wise cast you out. He will not turn you away. He will bring you back everything that he's ever spoken to you. Every promise in the book is yours. Everything that he's ever said about you. Every dream you've ever dreamed. The devil says it's over, but God says no, I've got it in my hand and I can make it happen. Just reach out to me now. Come on, let him let him touch you. Come on, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. His blessing and His care and His love. Would you indulge me just a moment? I feel this in my spirit this morning to continue to read some of this Psalm 91. Many of you have heard this so many times, but somebody needs to hear it today. I'm not talking about hearing it in your ear. I'm talking about hearing it in your spirit. What happens when you get close to God? What happens when you surrender what you don't understand? What happens when you let go of what you never had control of in the first place? He says in verse 3, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall trust his truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. In the night seasons, in the moments when your mind is so unat ease, you will not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by nay, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come upon your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in thy ways. You sh- they shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. stones. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon. 
shalt thou trample under your feet because he has set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high because he hath known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation somebody praise him like you know how come on praise him Enough of you, Lord. More I know you, more, more I want to, I, I can't get enough. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord would say to you this morning, my child, I am with you. I have never left you. For I say unto you, the noise that you hear is not of me. The noise that you hear is of your enemy that seeks to destroy you and entangle you and bring you into bondage. But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I would say to you this day, says the Lord and declares the Lord, that in your praise comes your power, that in your praise comes your release. You may not understand what's going on, and you may not see the end, but I, I'm here to tell you, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, declares the Lord. And I would say to you today that if you will reach out to me, if you will walk in my favor, if you will walk with me, and you will allow me to, I will go before you and make crooked places straight. I will be behind you and demolish the past. I'll be on your right hand, on your left hand, above you and beneath you. I will be in the midst of your trouble for today I decree and declare that victory is on the horizon. Look to the hills from which cometh your help for your help only comes from me saith the Lord. Lift your hands and praise him in this place today for freedom. <laughs> Come on, praise Him in this place. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him. I need you, Lord. <laughs> Let that be your declaration. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Come on, praise Him. Yeah, 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 I need you. Yes, I need you. All that I am at your feet to pour around my love and to praise you over and over. Over and over and over again. Say that again. God, I need yeah. all that I am at your, your feet. feet. Pour out my love and to praise you over, over. I got to do what I feel the Lord have me to do. There's someone here today that you're battling in your mind. The enemy has crowded you. You love Jesus. You're a child of his. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you that disclaimer right now. I don't want you to think that if you answer this, that somehow everybody here is going to think that you're in bad shape, that you're a sinner. How many of you know the devil, if you're not doing something right, the devil will leave you alone. 
But I'm here to tell you today from what the Lord is being said in this service today, God is wanting to set someone free in their mind today. God wants to deliver you from the spirit of oppression. The Lord wants to, to deliver you from the spirit of depression. If you're here today, lift your hand. If you're here today, lift your hand. There's more than one. Yeah, come on. There's more than, yeah, come on. I want you to step out of where you are and come across this altar. Come, come across this altar right now. Listen, I believe at the altar. I believe the altar is where things break. I believe at the altar is where sacrifices are made. I believe at the altar is where deliverance comes. If you really want that deliverance today, all you have to do is exactly what the Word said a moment ago. Cast your care upon Him. You you can kneel, you can stand, you can get on your face, you can raise your hand. But this morning, here's what I want you to do. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Come on. Receive it. Come on, church. I need you. Come on. Don't you sit back there. Don't you sit back there. If you need deliverance, come down here now. Come on, praise him. Oh, I need you more than the air that I breathe. You capture my heart. Come on. Come on. Oh, that I am at your feet. Yeah. Pour on my friend and to praise you. Over and over. I want everybody to grab hands with someone right now. I want everybody to link up arms with someone right now. Let me just say this to you. One of the biggest things the devil will tell you is it's not you. Denial will be delay. Denial will be defeat. And so I want everyone to grab a hold of somebody. Don't sit there by yourself. I'm asking you to find somebody. Grab them by the hands. And I want you to pray with them today. I want you to believe with them today that God is going to set them free right now. Every Everybody, all the way in the balcony. Those of you who are home watching TV, I want you to throw your hands up. I want you to grab the hand of someone there in the living room with you. And I want us to agree together that He is our deliverer. Come on, let's do it now. Closer, Lord. Yes, you are. Yes, you are.
You're pulling me closer, Lord. Come on now, throw your hands up and thank God for what He's done in your life. Come on, throw your hands up and thank God for what He's done in your life. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I magnify you, Lord. I worship you, Lord God. I worship you, Lord God. I worship you, Lord God. Come on, somebody don't get in a hurry. Just throw your hands up and praise Him. Throw your hands up and praise Him. Lord, I thank you. I magnify you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I take command. I take authority over this in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody needs to take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He's a great God. I said he's a great God. I said he's a great God. Somebody praise him. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise in this place. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now listen, I'm not saying this because you need to get up from the altar. You keep, you keep there until God gives you what you have, what he's wanting to give you and what you need. He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful Savior. The Holy Spirit. is the one that we honor today. And I'm thankful that we are people who believe in the gifts of the Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to work. Brother Doyle Jones is with us today. Brother Doyle, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to turn this to you and let the Holy Spirit lead you and you direct. He'll direct us as you continue to minister. This is a great man of God right here. This, this man of God has been around for a while. He's going to be around for a lot longer. I want you to stretch your hands this way right now. Father, I just pray for Brother Jones that you touch him. I know he's got some things going on that needs to be healed. And today, Lord, we know that you're the healer and you're the deliverer. And I thank you, Lord, for his testimony and for what he's meant to so many men like myself and young ladies as well. I pray, God, that you just anoint him right now with a greater anointing he's ever felt. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Wow. Aren't you glad for a Pentecostal pastor? Hallelujah. I go to some churches, they call themselves Pentecostal, but you are Pentecostal. I appreciate you, and I appreciate your wife, Tina, Mama. Wonderful. Now, I've known this guy, or he remembers me, since he was about 13. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm talking about your pastor. I'm not talking about the grandson. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's so good to feel the presence of God. I'm going to show you uh, some slides about our ministry Y'all have really been invested in what we're doing, and we appreciate it. And uh, if they can put those up there, I appreciate that. And let me see if this is on. I don't know your clicker as well as I do mine. Okay. Well, I must not have it on. Uh, you know your clicker? Let's see if you know it. I don't know which switch to hit. <laughs> okay. He says it's on. Amen. We were a missionary evangelist for 23 years, and I taught at Southwestern for 14 years. I've got a wonderful wife, and Tina really wanted her to be here. You pray for her. She uh, has had 28 operations, and she had a knee operation, a uh, knee replacement not too long ago, and uh, she needs to gain strength, and so you pray for her. She'd be here if she could, but I know she is praying, maybe watching. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, we, come on now, 
Don't fail me now. Uh, I don't know what I did, but I did it. <laughs> We've started 52 churches all over uh, uh, the world, but mainly in Latin America. And one of those runs uh, 25,000 in uh, Managua, Nicaragua. We have one that has started uh, 27 other churches in Panama. Um, every time you see me click, make me think I'm doing it, I guess. Um, we have started, uh, we do seminars and conferences all over the world. I just did a conference by Zoom in Pakistan. And there were, I don't know, a thousand or so people there. And we prayed for the sick. We prayed for people to get filled with the Holy Ghost, people to get saved. All of that happened. And I saw it myself as they lined up a long line of people just to tell what Jesus had done for them. The first one was a lady who was blind in one eye and God healed her. Tumors and growth disappeared. All of this in by Zoom, hallelujah, and I don't know how many got filled with the Holy Ghost. They Zoomed in on people, raising their hands, speaking in tongues for the first time, hallelujah, and uh, people filled with the Holy Ghost healed. We, we love the ministry. We love what God has called us to do, hallelujah. My last church plant was Asasangana in 2019. I've been here since then, and I realized that. And that church has been completed. Uh, it's not, I need some new photos, but it's been completed. And they're worshiping in their own building. Uh, we had a blind lady healed one night. And uh, I think she'd been blind for two years. And I said to her, can you see my face? She said, yes. I said, is it ugly? And she said, no, it's beautiful. Then I doubted she could see it all. And... Uh, <laughs> This pastor knows a secret. Shirley Ayler used to be Ayler. Uh, where are you, Shirley? Where'd Shirley go? She and I uh, knew, have known each other since both of us were young. That's a long time ago. And uh, uh, today I turned 79 years of age, so I've been around a while. Um, we were after, this is working, but it's working faster than I want it to. Hallelujah. There it is. Um, I was in Gato, Ethiopia, in a crusade of 27,000, uh, 22,000 people. I preached uh, on uh, healing and miracles, and I gave the invitation for people to come that were blind and deaf. And uh, the crowds came not just for the blind and deaf, but I, I, uh, I, I mentioned that. We had 10 blind people healed and 15 deaf people healed. And most of those people had not seen or heard all of their lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't see that enough in the States, but God is doing it. Hallelujah. I had a, a lady deaf in one ear healed a couple of weeks ago. It happens when people are expecting and believing. Praise God. Um, I was in Nicaragua in February 2000, uh, 2020 uh, to be with our good friend. And I can say my son in the faith, Nathan Alfaro. Uh, Nathan went with me on a trip to El Salvador when I was teaching at Southwestern, and that's where he received the confirmation of his call. He said, I want to do this the rest of my life, and he's been doing it. He started 10 churches in Nicaragua. I've helped him start five of those, and I'm going back in the fall. Hallelujah. Uh, I, when I was there, I got to preach at Ciudad Sandino, the church that your church helped us to start, and your pastor went down and uh, preached one night in that campaign and preached in some other places, and man, he was a blessing. you got a great preacher here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, the preaching him has to get out. He's already preached three sermons. Hallelujah. And that's great. Every bit of it was good. Hallelujah. Um, so I got to thinking about this church in Ciudad Sandino because uh, they didn't have a roof over their heads. Um, 250 people, and they're still beneath the tent. That's the only roof they have. And it's been that way since 2015, since we started the church. 
So I got to thinking we need to do something, and COVID shut me down. I couldn't go overseas. And I started raising funds for that church, and you helped us. I was here, and you helped us. And we raised all $80,000 of it, uh, and it, it was completed in June of last year. Hallelujah. And uh, they're going to have a roof. They're still going through all the, uh, the uh, problems with red tape. It's, it's a mess in the communist country. But they, it's going to happen, and we thank God for that. Uh, we had that, black, that man without a shirt. We were just praying from house to house, and he had been in a hammock, I think, for three years, and he couldn't, uh, not just in a hammock, but he couldn't walk for three years, but he was in a hammock in his house. And we prayed for him, and he got up and walked, walked down the sidewalk and showed his daughter what Jesus had done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Had a young lady healed of a blind eye one night. And um, we had great miracles. But uh, it's going to be a miracle when they get that building up. And the, the property alone cost $50,000. This church gave $10,000 toward that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Um, I had another little project of $10,000 for a church that I started in 2007. Uh, that church hasn't had a building or a permanent place to worship in all these years. They've moved over 10 times because they would, uh, uh, they would offend uh, the Hindus or offend the Muslims, and they would uh, shut them down, and they'd have to find another place. But uh, Builders International has taken that on as a project to buy them, them a property and also build them a building, and the, it's an estimated uh, $500,000 that they're raising. And they raised about half of that. Thank God. I gave a little bit. I promised uh, I'd give $10,000 uh, to Dr. David Goblin, who is working with Builders International. And I still hadn't given it toward the end of last year. And I told my wife, we're going to give it whether we have it or not. I want you to write $5,000 out. And that was the last day of December. She sent it off. And we got the mail that day, opened the mail that day. And somebody gave us a thousand dollars, a five thousand dollars, hallelujah! And I raised the rest of that uh, just uh, oh two or three months ago. I was in a church uh, of about thirty-five people, and they gave eight thousand five hundred dollars. We finished it, praise God! And now we're working on another project. We're going back to Nicaragua with the help of the Lord. I don't think this is working. I think you're doing it. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, we're trying to raise $50,000 again for a new church in Nicaragua. I was supposed to go to Guatemala, and they just could not get property. And I said, well, we're going to hold off. I've got to go somewhere because I, I'm, I, I told the Lord I'd build a church every year with his help. And we just about did that except for 20 uh 2020 and 2021, but we're going to do it this year with the help of the Lord. Uh, you're going to come? I put him on the spot. <laughs> Hallelujah! And we're going to we're going to. Uh, I like about forty thousand, not fifty thousand. So uh, if we get the rest of it this morning, I'd be a happy camper. Hallelujah! But you give what you can, and you've always helped us, and we appreciate it. Uh, we do other things. We uh, support missionaries, fifty of them. Uh, we do fire Bibles for Latin America. Anybody know what a fire Bible is? Amen. I'll, I'll show you one. It's right here. But it's called Life in the Spirit in the States. The Assemblies of God sent three million of these to China right after they were published to all of the uh, underground pastors. That was way back in the early 90s. The author of all the notes, Don Stamps, died two weeks after he completed the Bible. He never got to see the success it's had. Dr. Horton says, this is the best study Bible you can get. I, I used it in my classes. I taught 25 classes at Southwestern. And the preachers and pastors in Latin America need this book. We haven't made an emphasis of these in Latin America. But we uh, took it on ourselves to do what we could to get the Spire Bible to them, we've given about 400 of them to pastors, and so that's one of the things we do. We plant a church every year. We need monthly support. I believe you are supporting us, and we thank God for it. So 
Uh, anything you can do to help us this morning, I'm going to turn it back to the pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ushers, would you come quickly? I want our ushers to come. We're going to receive the offering. Then Brother Jones is going to give us some word this morning. This is his birthday. Can you say happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Brother Jones. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Stand with me. Let's bring our love gifts today as we offer up our giving, your tithe, your offering, and your missions offering. Come on. Just bring it on down. Brother Jones, sing us something. Hallelujah. Let's worship the name of our God. Let's worship the name of our God. Our voices we raise to give God the praise. Let's worship the name of our God. Let's sing out the praise of our God. Let's sing out the praise of our God. Our voices we raise to give God the praise. Let's sing out the praise of our God. Let's live Hallelujah. Stretch your hands this way. Father, we love you and we thank you today, Lord, for the privilege of giving. We ask, Lord, that you would bless this offering today. Bless everything that it's sent to accomplish for your glory. Bless it, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. In Jesus' wonderful name, we call it done. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated again. Every book that we have out there goes for the support of 50 missionaries. I have to tell you a little bit about them or you won't, won't buy them. You, you don't just buy a, a book by blind sight. You usually have to hear something about it. This is my book on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So many of you have got them over the years, but it's helped a lot of people get filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't know how many have got filled reading this book. There's 60 or 70,000 out there. And they're in different languages, and I don't know how many languages they're in. I give total permission to anybody in any language to, uh, to, to produce this book and give them away. So uh, you look at that. If you need the Holy Ghost, I believe you'll receive reading that book if you're hungry. This is my book on healing, giving God an opportunity. Hallelujah. That's what we do. We give God an opportunity. It's like Jesus said to the man, stretch forth your hand. He didn't grab his hand and stretch it forth. He had to try. When he tried, he was healed. In an atmosphere of praise and worship and seeking God and faith, that's what I tell people. Try to do something you couldn't do. It's amazing. Uh, in Nicaragua, we had a lady that uh, could not open her hand for eight years, and we'd already prayed, and I just walked over to her. I didn't touch her. I didn't lay hands on her. I said, I want you to try to open that hand. Immediately she opened her hand when she tried. Hallelujah. And so I want you to get that concept in this book. This is my book on Jesus. You've read it, right? Put him on the spot again. One pastor read this book. He, I've known him since he was 17 years of age, and he called me up. He said, I believe that's the best book I've ever read. It, he liked it because, you know, it's all about Jesus, and it's a sermon book, and I think you'll like it too. And this book is one of our Assemblies of God pastors in Kentucky. His 
37-year-old son and the son's fiance were murdered point blank and they burned the building down over them and nobody was ever supposed to know the pastor was broken hearted he could hardly go on preaching his other son backslid over it went to drugs but he kept praying kept believing and even the hidden things will be revealed when you pray and when you believe God and they found the perpetrators all five of them of them are in prison today but this is like reading a murder mystery, except God's involved. I, I challenge you to read it. The day hell knocked on our door. And uh, this service, the, the altar call that the pastor gave reminded me so much of this book. You read this book? Out of Darkness. This is by Dr. Gary Royer. Uh, he was a missionary to Brazil, saw a lot of demon possession, a lot of people delivered, went and got his doctorate, wrote his dissertation over uh, how to be free, and demon possession, uh, demon possessed people delivered. And it's, it's, it's especially good for Christians because it's got steps to freedom for Christians. You say, well, Christians can't be demon possessed. You're right. But they can let strongholds build in their lives and I, that, that's the kind of altar call we had with people needing liberty who are Christians. It gives steps to freedom. I think this ought to be taught in every church. Hallelujah. I believe it ought to be taught in every church. And Dr. Roy is one of my great, great friends and is on my board. This is, uh, I only have three of these left, The Master Mentor by Marvin Gorman and Dr. Judy Doyle. Judy Doyle was a personal friend of mine. Uh, we went to Bible college together. We worked one summer in Teen Challenge together, and she did the background uh, commentary or uh, research on the gifts of the Spirit. But the uh, addition of Marvin Gorman giving all of his experience how God had used him in the gifts, uh, it makes this one of the best books I have ever read. And I've read a bunch of them, but the best book I've ever read on the gifts of the Spirit. And I only have three of those left out there, so first come, first serve. The most important part of a service is what? Anybody know? The preaching of the Word of God. So we're going to turn to the book of Exodus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo! I'm telling you what, this, this pastor's got this pulpit ready for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. We're going to read, you know, I hate to have you stand again, but let's honor the word by standing. You know, the reason I do that is to wake people up and uh, uh, if you've gone to sleep. And another reason is it may be the last time you get to stand for two hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Unless you say amen while I preach. I preach shorter when people say amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you back there just to take care of that clicking part because it's, it's uh, only three or four slides anyway. And uh, so I won't be distracted by that when it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, let's read from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will, no, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Now I'm going to read some very familiar verses of Scripture to Pentecostals. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind that set upon 
uh, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And a few of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. No. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm going to preach on this simple subject of the burning bush. The burning bush. I want you to pray while you're standing. I want you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we've already had church. We've had a great move of God already. And we thank you because you're in the house. I believe you, Lord Jesus, to let me be free. Let the power of God flow freely. Let the glory of God come upon us. Help us to be that bush that you want us to be. Move upon this people. In your name, Jesus, I pray it. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to look at the bush itself, and we're going to see some things about that bush that we can, uh, we can attach to ourselves. We can, uh, we can correlate to ourselves. The first thing about this bush was that the bush was available. The bush was available. It didn't have a will of its own. It couldn't say no. It couldn't refuse the touch of the master's hand. We can, but this bush was available. Hallelujah. God is looking for somebody who is available. Just like on the day of Pentecost, he looked for people who were available. And 120 showed up that were available. They stayed in his presence. Hallelujah. Until God moved. Hallelujah. Now, this, this bush was dry. And there are a lot of churches that are dry. There are a lot of people that are dry. A lot of people give up on dry churches. They give up on people who are dry. But people who are dry, churches that are dry, oftentimes respond to the fire quicker. The bush would be uh, in that category. Amen. I've always felt that I didn't have any problem with dry churches if my matches weren't wet. Hallelujah. If you bring a little fire with you, you'll see fire in the pulpit, you'll see fire in the pew, you'll see fire in the church. What bothers me more than dry churches are people who are not hungry for God. They sit there and they really don't want the move of the Spirit. I want to be among people who want to see the things of God, who want the glory of God, who want the power of God. Hallelujah. And so this bush stood in a good place. God knew that Moses was coming by there, and God selected a bush. And he said, that bush, I'm going to use that bush. Hallelujah. 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 I remember when I was a student at Southwestern. Now, that's been a while. But I remember when I was a student at Southwestern that uh, some of us uh, young men decided we were going to pray all night long. We did that for a week. Every night, nobody called that prayer meeting. We got permission, and we prayed in the chapel, the old chapel. Every night we prayed. Every night we sought God. We were hungry for God. We were making ourselves available. Hallelujah. And I remember one night about 3 o'clock in the morning, there was a huge ball of light that appeared in the big glass-stained windows that were way up high. And there was no explanation for that light. It couldn't have occurred just uh, naturally or by anybody being up there. And besides that, when that huge ball of light appeared, it seemed like the rays just penetrated me. I fell on my face before God. There were about four or five. There were a whole lot more guys, but for some reason, four or five of us saw this. And I remember it appeared again, and I crawled out of that place that night. I did not feel worthy to even stand up. And all that week, the next week, I just felt the presence of God like I've never felt it in my life. I'd be in a classroom, and, and the, 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 the professor was teaching, and tears would just be, it didn't matter what they were teaching. I was thinking about God. You know, you can get to that place that you don't complain about what the music is like. You don't complain about what the church is like. You don't complain that it's not doing what you want it to do. You can get to the place that you can feel the power of God and the glory of God. 
regardless of what goes on. I hear people complain about music. I'm here to tell you, I don't go to church to worship music. I go to church to worship Jesus. Hallelujah. And as long as I got my, net, my mind on Jesus, I can tell you I'm going to get a blessing. I don't care what goes on. Hallelujah. 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 I remember running to the alt to the uh, prayer rooms uh, in between classes uh, and just raising my hands and speaking in tongues uh, because I had seen the glory of God. It all happened because uh, I made myself available. Some people say, well, I wish that I could be as close to God uh, as old sister so-and-so. The reason you're not close to God as old sister so-and-so is because you've moved away from God. Hallelujah. God doesn't say only certain people can be close to me. I used to tell the little story about the, uh, the, the old man and the old woman. I can say that now because I'm there. And uh, they were driving a car. Back in those days, there was one seat in the in the front, one seat in the back. There was no interruption. In the, there were not bucket seats. And uh, so the old man was driving. He looked over to his wife and said, Honey, you never, uh, or she looked over to him, and she said, You never sit by me anymore. And he looked it over, her, over to her, and he said, I haven't moved. I'm where I always was. We get the idea that somehow God has moved away from us. He'll never move away from you. Hallelujah. Hey, you can draw as close. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Well, we like to quote that part that says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But that doesn't happen until you draw nigh to God. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't want to be around where God is. Hallelujah. If God's in you and God's powerfully in you, the devil can't stand it. Hallelujah. We need to make ourselves available. Now, the next thing about that bush We'll put the next one up there. The bush was ordinary. The bush was ordinary. It was not different from any other bush. There were thousands of bushes in the desert that looked just like that bush. And so it was ordinary. The kind of thing that God likes to delight in is using people that you would never have thought that God could use. Hallelujah. Using the ordinary. On the day of Pentecost, they were all ordinary. They weren't, they weren't uh, the scribes and the Pharisees and the most important people. They were ordinary people, but God chose to use the ordinary to start the greatest revival the world has ever known at Pentecost. Hallelujah. That bush, uh, the, you know, that bush that God chose was just so much like other bushes that, uh, that no longer, no wonder that, Moses ignored it at first, but he had to pay attention because of the fire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't know a whole lot about me, but you would have never selected me to be uh, an evangelist. You would have never selected me to be a pastor because way back in those days when I was about 18 years of age, I had pimples on my face. I had... 30 weight of oil in my hair. We, we used something back in those days called Brill Cream. Some of you don't know what that is because you're too young. But they had a little song in their commercial. Brill Cream, a little dabba do you. Brill Cream, you look so debonair. Brill Cream, the girls will all pursue you. They love to get their fingers in your hair. That was a lie. I know by experience. I used a, not just a little dab, but I used a big dab, amen. Uh, nobody wanted to touch that hair, amen. I had pimples on my face. I wore little back black rim glasses. I was so skinny I had to run around the shower to get wet. Had only one stripe on my pajamas. I tell you, I was, if, I'd have, if I'd have drank a red pop, I'd look like a thermometer needle. Uh, I had to braid the hair on my legs to keep my socks up. I was, I, you know all of those, I was skinny, amen. I, I, when I went to Bible school, I, had a hundred, I weighed 130 pounds soaking wet. And um, uh, I've, I've uh, improved on that a little bit. But uh, I, was, I was in a revival, a four-week revival, 
and the, and the evangelist was Paul Emerson. His son pastored the church that he used to pastor. It's a great church. And, um, uh, and I went up to him the final night of that revival. I said, Brother Paul, I don't know what God wants me to do, but I know it's not to preach. I, f I found that out by just trying to get up and talk uh, behind the pulpit. I kind of stammered and stuttered over my words. And, and I said, uh, I know it's not to preach, but I want you to pray with me. By that time, I had graduated from high school. I was working in a machine shop in Houston, Texas. And two days later in the machine shop, noise of mach machines were whirring everywhere. And I was in that machine shop, and I could... You know, I could pray as loud as I wanted to, really, but uh, I was praying, and, and the Spirit of God came over me. If you're available, God can come over you anywhere you are. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of God came over me, and I heard God say to me, Will you be a missionary? And I began to weep, and I said, Yes, Lord, I will be a missionary if that's what you want. I didn't know a whole lot about missionaries. I remember one that came from... Africa, and she showed a bunch of slides. Boringest service I've ever been to. But I figured I could show slides as good as any missionary. I still do it. Amen. <laughs> and, uh, and so I went home, and I told my mother. I won my mother to the Lord. She was not a, a Christian when I got saved. She had a, a, a church background, but uh, I tried to get her to go to my church. She wouldn't. She got mad at me one time. I just got aggravated because I asked her every Sunday. The pastor would come by, Brother Alan Sanders would come by and pick me up in his big old Oldsmobile. He made me a project. He took me to church every Sunday, every Wednesday at first. When I started going there, we had Tuesday and Thursday night services. He took me to every service, every prayer meeting. I was there, sat on the front row in the church, and he took me. He invested in me, and I would ask my mother to go to church with us. And when he showed up, one morning she said, I don't want to go to church with you. You know what she didn't like about my church is that we spoke in tongues. She didn't know a thing about it, and she didn't want to go to that kind of church. But she got under conviction after I left, and she went in the back room and started crying. And she said, God, I ought to go to church with that boy. But she wouldn't go to my church. She found her a, a neighborhood Baptist church that she went to. But what she didn't know about that Baptist church was it was charismatic. Hallelujah. My mother got saved. She got baptized in the Holy Ghost. She kept me awake all night long speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. And so when I came home uh, that Tuesday that God had spoken to me, I said, Mama, God called me to be a missionary today. And my mother started crying, and she said, Son, when you were born, there was a Pentecostal lady by the bedside. You see, I was born at home. Doctors made house calls back then. And by the way, everybody, I was born in Texas. Amen. And the, the, the only reason I can give you why I was born in Texas is because I wanted to be near my mother at childbirth, and it worked out that way. <laughs> Amen. So I discovered America. Amen. Hallelujah. And the doctor, doctor did not get there in time. I've always been impatient. But there was this Pentecostal lady by the side of the bed, and she took me in her arms, and she began to prophesy over me, and she said, this boy will be a wonderful worker for God. My mother told me that, crying, when I told her that the Lord had called me to be a missionary. Hallelujah. I went to church on Wednesday. I was a church pianist at our church, and I got up beside the, the piano bench when it came to testimony time. You don't have those kind of testimony times anyway, uh, anymore, you know. Uh, some of the weirdest things you'll ever hear is testimony time. One guy got up and testified. He said, I thank God I only have two teeth, and they hit that's quite a testimony. He couldn't chew if it wasn't for those two teeth hitting. So you'll never know. But we had a lot of testimony. But I got up beside the, the uh, uh, piano bench, and I said, God called me to be a missionary yesterday. That's about all I said. After the service, 
I walked back to the back, and the pastor said to me, well, that means you're going to be a preacher. I hadn't thought about preaching. I thought I could teach the natives as good as anybody and show slides, you know. And, uh, and so I had to take that into consideration. My pastor says I got to preach. Well, he, I guess he wanted to see if I could preach because uh, a few weeks later, he called up my home and he said, we're planning a surprise. We want Brother Doyle, that's what they call you by your first name when you're young. We want Brother Doyle to preach on Wednesday night. Well, I don't have the sharpest relatives. Some of them, the drive to, driveway doesn't go all the way to the street. And um, so my aunt answered that and got that call. She was in our house more than she was in her house. And so she called all of my relatives, and she told them that little doll, I don't know what she said, is going to be preaching for the first time, and you ought to go. So what she understood was it was going to be a surprise for me. <laughs> and when I walked out of the door that night, my mother and my aunt were going with me, and I was driving to the church. My mother said, son, uh, uh, put on a tie and a coat. She knew what, knew what was coming. And I said, Mama, I don't wear a tie and coat on Wednesday night. And she said, well, well, please put on a coat. I put on a coat. And when I got to the church, the pastor was standing there. He always did that. Way, uh, just the, the first door you walked into, you were walking in the church. And I walked in the church, and he said, boy, where's your tie? He didn't say, how you doing? Good to see you. I said, uh, what's this business about a tie? I don't wear a tie on Wednesday night. He said, you're preaching. I said, I'm not preaching. He said, look over here. There are three rows of your relatives. I should have checked the roof because they never came to church. And, and, and I said, oh, my. I ran to the altar. I fell across that altar. I had to get a sermon within five minutes. I started praying and seeking God and turning over my Bible. And I'd been reading in the book of Exodus. And so I, I saw these uh, Three objections of Moses in the Schofield Bible in my footnotes. And I said, that, I guess I can preach on that. And so I couldn't even go into a back room and pray and get more thoughts. Of, I had to play the piano for the service. And when it came time for the preachers, then now Brother Doyle's going to preach. And I get up and I read my text and I could not find that footnote. You know, it was Moses' two objections, not three objections. And I can only remember one of two. I lost 50% of my sermon, and I preached about 55 uh, minutes, not 55 minutes, and I sat down, and I felt like the greatest failure the world has ever known. I felt like the guy that told his boss on a Friday. He said, boss, God's called me to be a preacher. I, I, I got to go preach. He said, well, we're going to uh, hate to lose you. I said, he said, if you want to, come back at any time. On Monday, he was back, and the boss said, I thought you said God called you to preach. He said, yes, sir. That was before he heard me. <laughs> Hallelujah. A couple of weeks later, the CA leader. Anybody know what a CA leader? The youth leader, I guess you could say, back in the day. She came to me and said, can you preach on a Sunday night, about a week ahead of time? She gave me that, that warning. <laughs> and uh, I thought, had she not been present when I tried the last time? And so I said yes. I didn't know what else to say, but yes. And our CA service was one hour before the main service. We started at 6, they started at 7. And so uh, I, I thought about it, thought about it. I, I didn't know how to go about preparing a sermon. I still had nothing on that Sunday afternoon before I was to preach that night. So I was in my room at home, and I on my knees, my Bible open on the bed, and I was praying. I said, God, I don't know what you want me to say. I don't know what verse I'm supposed to preach on. God, if you'll just give me the verse, I'll preach on it. And James 1 and 2 came to my mind immediately. And I said, 
You know, how do I know that's not me just making that up? That, how do I know that's God? So I got my Bible, and I put it on the side of the bed closed. And I said, now, Lord, if this Bible falls open to James 1 and 2, I know that's you talking to me. And I closed my eyes. I let the Bible fall open. And the first verse I saw was James 1 and 2. I said, man. You know, God, if, if you did it once, you can do it again. So I closed that Bible. I prayed again. I let it fall open. I looked down. There was James 1 and 2. Then I thought, some Bibles just fall open to certain places. I grabbed another Bible, and I put it. I was getting excited now. I said, God, you can do this just as easy with that Bible, and you can do it with this Bible. It was an old Bible. Some of the pages were missing. And so this is the first Bible I, I ever had. I won it in, when I was 11 and got saved because they had a little uh, contest. Anybody could say all the books of the Bible would get a free Bible. And that's how I got my first free Bible. I memorized all the titles of the books of the Bible when I was 11. How old is he? Hallelujah. That's a challenge for you. I read my Bible through when I was 11. Amen. My mother bought a piano for me. Uh, for, for my sisters, not for me. When I was 11, I played for my first revival six months later. Everything seemed to have to mean 11. When I was 11, I had a vision of hell, and I heard God say, you've got to stop people from going to hell. Everything seemed to, and I got baptized in the Holy Ghost when I was 11. Praise God. But uh, uh, I got that old Bible, and I put it on the side of the bed, and I said, Lord, let this Bible fall open to James 1 and 2. And I was excited. I, I, you know, something was happening here. I let it fall. Now, God will honor you. You know, if that's the way you get direction, it'll, it'll happen a few times. But one day, you're going to put your finger on a verse that says, Thou art doomed forever. <laughs> and you'll say, three out of, Two out of three, Lord! You know. And uh, so when I op let that Bible fall open, it fell open to the concordance. I tried to help God out. I looked all the way through the concordance to see if there's any reference to James 1 and 2, and there was no reference to James 1 and 2. Uh, I, I closed it, and I said, Now, God, if this Bible doesn't fall open to James 1 and 2, I'll know that you haven't called me, and I will not preach the gospel. If it does, then I, will. I was putting God between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> you can't do that to God. And... Finally, after about 30 minutes of really praying fervently, I let that Bible fall open. And when I looked down, the first verse I saw was James 1 and 2. Hallelujah. A confirmation. Boy, I needed it. Hallelujah. And, I, you know, I thought, you don't make notes because uh, that's worldly. You just depend on God and let every word come from God out of your mouth. So I didn't say, I didn't make one note. I've learned since then. You need a little paper to start a fire sometimes, but hallelujah. And so I, I got up that night to preach. I didn't know exactly what I was going to say, but I'm telling you, when I started preaching, I didn't have to worry about it. I preached for 45 minutes under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They didn't invite me back because I wasn't supposed to go 45 minutes. Went over time, you know, into the next service. But I'm here to tell you, friends, uh, that it works, and God chooses the ordinary. You would have never chosen me, but the Bible says that God looks in the heart, not on the outward appearance. If God were looking at the outward appearance, he'd call the Marines. But God is looking for somebody that's ordinary, that's hungry for God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. You know all the excuses in the Bible. You, you can find people. You can find Amos. He said, I was just a, a, a farmer, a, a gatherer of sycamore fruit. But God spoke to me and said, go prophesy to my people. And Moses himself, you know, those objections I was talking about. He said, I, I, I can't speak before people. And God had to give him a, a mouthpiece in the form of his brother Aaron had all of these excuses. We, we can make excuses, but what we need to say, I don't care how impossible it looks, but I'm going to be used of God. I may be ordinary, but I can be super.
extraordinary. Hallelujah, if there's such a word. Under the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. God's looking for somebody in this building that he's been speaking to. And you keep telling him no and saying you can't do it. Say like Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever thy hand findeth to do, do it. Praise God. God's going to use you like you've never thought possible. I never dreamed that one day I'd be preaching in Spanish. Hallelujah. Not just English because I stuttered a little bit when I got in the pulpit. I never dreamed how God would send me to 47 nations of this earth. I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing. I never dreamed I'd start 52 churches. You couldn't have convinced me that I would be doing that. But I'm grateful for a God. He knows what he's doing. He sees who you are, and he wants to use you. Hallelujah. Let's look at the next thing about this bush. It was available. It was ordinary, and it attracted attention. The bush attracted attention. As Moses was walking by, he saw something out of the corner of his eye. It wasn't, it wasn't unusual for bushes to catch on fire. In the uh, desert, bushes did that sometimes. They just caught on fire because of the intense heat. And so it wasn't unusual. He had seen that before. As he was walking, he saw this fire burning in this bush. He didn't pay any attention to it. He kept walking, kept glancing, and all of a sudden he stopped. He said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. Why was it a great sight? Because it did not consume. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's looking for somebody he can set on fire that's going to stay on fire. God wants to get somebody who is, I might as well get down here. Hallelujah. God wants to get a hold of somebody that will stay on fire. People go through a revival. They go through a camp meeting, and they get all fired up. In a week, they're just back to where they were. But God wants somebody full of the Holy Ghost, constantly filled with the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 5, 18 says, be being filled. You said, I didn't read it that way. Well, that's the way it reads in the Greek. Be being filled. With the Holy Spirit, the word is Plato. It means a constant feel it, filling, not just once. I was in a great church. There are at least uh, 400 people there just uh, here in Texas not too long ago. And I started praying with people, and I started uh, laying my hands on people. I'd say, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? And they said, well, uh, yeah. I said, uh, do you speak in tongues often? No, it's been years since I spoke in tongues. They thought they were still filled with the Holy Ghost because they spoke years ago. I must have prayed at least with 10 people who were not speaking in tongues anymore. Hallelujah. And they got refilled with the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, that's why Jude said in verse 20, he said, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the way you build up your most holy faith is to pray in the Holy Ghost. And that faith is talking about the, the faith of the saints, the faith of the Christians. It's not the uh, faith that, that we think of and to believe God. It's the faith, hallelujah, being in the faith. Look it up. There's more meaning to the faith than just uh, believing. Faith, the faith, being in the way, being on the road for God, building up yourself. How are you going to be a better Christian except through praying in the Holy Ghost? That's one of the ways, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. How long has it been since you prayed in the Spirit? How long has it been since you talked in tongues under the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. We need to be constantly, constantly filled with God. And so Moses drew himself aside, and he came a little closer to that bush. And when he got to the bush, God spoke to him. It was when his attention was totally on what God was doing that God spoke to him. Hallelujah. Anybody follow me? It's when you get close enough to God to see what he's doing and not what others are doing, that's when God's going to speak to you. It doesn't matter how God is speaking to other people. How is he speaking to you? 
does he have your full undevoted attention? On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came on people that were available to God. They were ordinary people, but the glory of God came on them, and the fire didn't go out. Hallelujah. Right after that, Peter, in chapter number 3, he and John were going up to the temple, and there was a man who had been lame for 40 years, and Peter said, look on us. Can't you just imagine the thoughts of that lame man as he said, well, I'm going to get something now, big payday. This is about it. Then, and then uh, Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Uh-oh, I'm not getting anything from them. He probably wanted to turn his attention to somebody else. But Peter said, such as I have. Hallelujah. Can you say to people, such as I have? Talking about spiritual things, such as I have. Give I unto thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And the man was healed by the power of God. Why? The fire didn't go out in Peter. Hallelujah. And Peter successfully served God the rest of his life. And when they came to crucify him, according to tradition, he refused to be crucified like Jesus. He said, turn the cross upside down. I'm not worthy to be crucified like Jesus. Why? Because he had the fire of God in his spirit. He had the fire of God operating. We need somebody that will get on fire for God and the world will begin to look at them and say there's something different about you. Smith Wigglesworth, I got a bunch of his books out there. He walked into a train compartment and sat down and he wasn't there but a few minutes and one man looked at him and he, sir, he said, Sir, you bring me under conviction. He hadn't said a word to him. And they had revival right in that compartment, and the man got saved, and everybody in the compartment got saved because Smith Wigglesworth never let 30 minutes go by that he didn't pray. He prayed. He, he was asked, how often do you pray? He, uh, how long do you pray? He said, I can't tell you that, but I'll tell you I never let 30 minutes go by without praying. No wonder God used him. God's used him for somebody that says, I'll be that bush. I'll be that bush. Hallelujah. How are you going to react when you stand by the grave and you're putting away your, your loved one? That's when the world is going to see Jesus in you because you may hurt just like anybody, but you still have your faith in Jesus Christ. They watch you on the job, and they see you. Oh, you're on fire for God for a while, and then you cool off, and, and then you're right with the rest of them, listening to the same things they do and perhaps doing the same things they do. God is looking for somebody that will stay on fire for God. Hallelujah. Now look at the final one. The bush had an influence. Hallelujah. When Moses drew near to the bush, God says, take off your shoes, for this is holy ground. Even the ground became holy because of the fire in the bush. Woo, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. That bush had an influence that was to last uh, all through Moses' ministry. Praise God. That bush was the influence for the greatest chain of miracles the world has ever known. Amen. Hallelujah. As Moses led the children of Israel out of bondage, and they, they walked the equivalent for 40 years of of one circulation of the globe and another half. That's how far they walked. Amen. And, and Moses led that group. They saw miracle after miracle after miracle, all because a bush got on fire. I'm telling you, if God would set somebody on fire this morning, there's no telling what would happen in Livingston, Texas, if we determined I'm going to be that bush. I'm going to influence somebody. Look at the Pentecostals on the day of Pentecost. They had an influence that shook their world. Hallelujah. They said, these uh, that have come uh, here, uh, that have turned the world upside down, uh, they were incorrect. Uh, they weren't trying to turn the world upside down. They were trying to turn the world right side up. Uh, we got a world that's upside down. Uh, I'll tell you, there are demon-possessed people everywhere. I believe a bunch of them are in Washington. We need the power of God to move in our nation. We need the glory of God one more time. Uh, and it's not going to be by who we elect. It's going to be by who we are. Hallelujah. As a church, if we'll get on our knees 
and become the person God wants us to be. We can change America one by one by one by one, not by some election, but by the Spirit of God. That's the only answer for America. Hallelujah. We're the influence. I went to my, this, is, this has been a while ago. I went to my 40th class reunion. I say it's been a while ago because I recently, last year, went to my 60th class reunion. Boy, those people are old. I thought that at my 40th class reunion. They were old. They said to one lady, they said, uh, you don't look, uh, you haven't changed a bit in all these years. She said, you mean I look this old and ugly in high school? I sat down at a table, and there was a lady and her husband and another guy. I knew the other guy, but I didn't recognize the lady. And she said to me, what's your name? She didn't recognize me either, so I felt good. The great thing about getting old is you don't remember as well. And that's, that's a great thing. You can laugh at a joke you heard yesterday. You can meet new people that you just met. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so old I can hide my own Easter eggs. <laughs> Wrap my own Christmas gifts and forget what's in there. Hallelujah. So I, I forgot her name. She forgot my name. And so we, she said to me, what's your name? I said, Doyle Jones. And there was some degree of recognition. And she said, um, she told me her name, and uh, she said, I'm one of the twins. Oh, yeah, I remember the, the twins. And she said, uh, what do you do? At that time, I was a teacher, a professor at Southwestern Assemblies of God University. I could have tried to impress her and say, I'm a professor of the university. But I didn't do that. I said, I'm a preacher. And she said, uh, oh, what church are you with? I said, I'm with the Assemblies of God. She said, I love the Assemblies of God. That was news to me. I knew her in high school. <laughs> and she told me her story. She, so, she said, I, after I graduated, I got into drugs. I think she'd been married. This was the third marriage. And she said, I, I, I just lived a horrible life. She said, but one Sunday morning, for some reason, I got up thinking, I need to go to church. I wish more people would think that. And she got the old-fashioned phone directory. You don't know what that is. But used to, in Houston, it was about that big, and she was in Houston. And she turned over to the yellow pages. Do you remember what yellow pages were? And she looked at churches. How many of you are glad that Assemblies of God starts with an A? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. She looked at churches, and she found an Assembly of God church that wasn't too far where we, from where she lived. And so she went to church at an Assembly of God church that morning. And she said, uh, when the, they had an evangelist. And she said, when he gave the altar call, I ran to the front. And two hours later, I got up off the floor. I said to somebody, what happened to me? They said, demons came out of you. And she got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Oh. Woo, Hallelujah. It was worth going to that 40th reunion just to hear that. I actually changed my schedule so I could go to it. And God wanted me to hear that story. And I said to her, uh, well, are you still filled? She said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. She said, the next day after I was filled, I went to work. And she said, I worked where there were a lot of tables and computers and offices. Uh, I had to uh, pass through a lot of people in order to get to my desk. And she said, as I walked by, people started falling off of their chairs, one this way, one that way. And I said, does that happen often? She said, when I get full of the Holy Ghost, it does. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. I want to be so full of the Holy Ghost that people fall off their chairs. Amen. I want to be so used of God that, that people will know that the Spirit of God is in me. Hallelujah. Well, I want to walk down there. I want to walk down the street and people get healed. Hallelujah. I've actually seen a little boy came up to me. He had seen me on television in, in Paraguay. 
He lived in Argentina. We were visiting over in Argentina. He said, are you that guy on television? I said, yeah. He had hobbled up to me. He said, uh, would you pray for me? He had seen all the testimonies of miracles. I laid my hands on him. Right there on the street corner, he was healed and started running around like a normal child. I want to be that person. I want to be that bush. I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. I want you to be full of the Holy Ghost. I want all of us to be full of the fire of God. I want everybody to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Our musicians can come back. I wouldn't mind you singing that same song that you did at the end there. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want you to raise your hands. I want you to raise your hands. I want you to praise God as this altar call begins. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. They're going to sing that song, I Need You. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Speak to us, speak to us, speak to us, Lord Jesus, speak to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. I believe God is speaking to somebody that he wants to use. Speaking to somebody not where they ought to be with God. You withstood that one round, but God wants you to yield to, to him. He wants you to say, God, I'll be that bush. I'll be that bush. I want every head bowed, every eye closed, and I want you to pray this prayer after me. Everybody here, pray it. Pray it out loud. With a mouth, confession is made to salvation. You say, I'm already saved. Well, you're going to help somebody who's not. They won't feel alone or stranded as the one person or two people or however many there are that needs to pray this. But you need to pray it too. If there's anything in your life that should not be there, you need to yield it to God. So I want everybody to pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me if there's anything in my heart that should not be there. I yield myself to you. God, I'll be that bush. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I yield myself to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am forgiven. I am free, free, free. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I've been seeing extraordinary miracles. Hallelujah. Don't say that boastfully, but I've been seeing extraordinary miracles. I've been seeing people filled with the Holy Ghost. I've been seeing people healed. Hallelujah. I want everybody that has a need to run up here. Run, 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 run. You said, we don't do that in the States. I know. We do it overseas. I've seen them run, and at the time that they hit the front, they were healed. They were filled. They received. You need anything from God, I want you to come. Sing that song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some of you that need to be the bush. You're not the bush. You're not what God wants you to be. You're not burning. Just You can sing over my talking. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. My heart it burns with an come on, come on. You might as well come on the first wave. Because I'm going to ask everybody in this building to come up here. We may not all fit, but I want everybody up here. An altar service is where we yield ourselves to God. It's where we go for God. It's where we become the bush that God wants us to be. Hallelujah. I want everybody up here. You say, I don't normally come. That's why I want you up here. Hallelujah. 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 You say, I can't stand long. Will you come and kneel? Or you come and sit on the front row? Hallelujah. 
Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. There's probably some in this building that haven't been to the altar so long. You don't know what it's like. You get around the altar and everybody starts glorifying God. Things start happening. Hallelujah. 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 People start hearing from God. They start receiving from God. There's a whole lot more of you. You're looking up here and say, there's not room. There's room in the aisles. Hallelujah. There's room over there against the wall. I want everybody to come. Hallelujah. 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 When's the last time you came to the altar? Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. I'm still waiting. Still waiting. I want everybody up here. Hallelujah. You say, I can stay back here. Yeah, but I'm telling you, God has something special for you up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to. I'm going to lay hands on folks. And I'm going to believe God to touch people, to work miracles in your finances, to work miracles in your relationships, to do the impossible. I don't know what God's going to do. How many of you have never been baptized in the Spirit? Never spoken in tongues? Raise your hand real high for me to see. Glory to God. We had a, I'm preaching on Wednesdays at Dallas First Assembly in Dallas, Texas. We had a man and his wife that came all the way from Portland, Oregon, and decided they would come to church, find them an Assembly of God church because they're Assembly of God. He had a Lutheran background, had never been filled with the Holy Ghost. But because he came up and I laid hands on him, he got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The lady the week before, 21 years, she'd been seeking the Holy Ghost since she got baptized in the Holy Ghost. God has something for everybody in this building. Hallelujah. It's not, not just a, a passive thing. It's the glory of God. Hallelujah. I want this pastor to come up here on the platform with me, and we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And when we finish praying, I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, I'm believing that every one of you will start speaking in tongues, whether you've been filled or not. I'm going to ask the glory of God because people are healed when the Holy Ghost comes on them. Problems are solved when the Holy Ghost comes on you. Hallelujah. Finances are solved when the Holy Ghost has his way. Come on, everybody. Raise your hands to God. Some of you have never done that. We don't do that anymore in Assembly of God churches. Hallelujah. Worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Now we're going to pray. Lord, we believe you that the glory of God will be poured out of, upon your people. We bind every demon of hell. We bind every, every problem that he puts on people. Every sin among us. God will be that bush. God will be that bush. I want you to tell it. God, I'll be that bush. God, I'll be that bush. God, I'll be that bush. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord Jesus, when I count to three, let the glory of God come on your people. Oh, Jesus, we depend on you. We can't do this. We can't do this. It's up to you. You're the baptizer. You're the healer. You're the miracle worker. And I believe you to move. I believe you to move. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Are you ready? Hallelujah. 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 Pastors, believe him with me. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. In the mighty name of Jesus. When I say three, I want you to go all out for God. I want God to touch you from the top of your head, soles of your feet. Everybody get ready. In the mighty name of of Jesus. One, two, three. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, come on. We're not where God wants us to be yet. Come on. I'll be that bush. Hallelujah. Keep going. Hallelujah. I you're going to speak right now. 
Do you believe you're going to speak in tongues now? I do. Put your hand right here. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. When I lay hands on you, I want God to lay his hands on you. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. Pray with anybody you want to pray with. Pastor. you got to something. you got to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Keep praising God. Keep praising. Keep singing. It's okay. Lord, I believe you. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Still your strength. Still your power. Lord, when I lay my hands on you, on me, I want the glory of God to come rest in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. In the body. Hey, my Jesus. Take a deep breath. Just like you're drinking. Way down inside. It's inside of you. Bubbling up. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Open your mouth. Get ready to speak. Lord, when I lay my hands on that same anointing that hit her before, let it hit her again. In Jesus' name. That's right. There's one more. Get it. It's the same words you spoke before. Say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Speaking tongues, you always speak in tongues. Lord, give her a couple of those in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray that you heal anything that needs to be healed. I pray for the miracle of God to get hold of her. Hallelujah. I believe it right now. I believe it right now. Glory to God, glory to God. Speak in that tongue. Speak in that tongue. Hallelujah. Because that's what brings the victory. Hallelujah. Lord, the, the anointing, the anointing brings the victory. Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. I believe God can heal you. Lord, when I lay my hands on her, I want you to lay your hands on her. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus, it's you. It's you. It's you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do something you couldn't do. Try to do something you couldn't do. That's giving God an opportunity. Try to do something you couldn't do. Give Him an opportunity. Give Him an opportunity. Lord, I believe in the healer. I believe in the healer. It's you. It's you who does it. Hallelujah. It's you that does it. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Pain must go. Hallelujah. Sickness must go. Be it done. Be it done. Be it done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe something happened. I believe something happened. Hallelujah. I believe it happened. I believe it happened. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Healer, work a miracle in her body. Do a work. Do a work. Do a work. Hallelujah. If there's anything you couldn't do, I want you to try to do it. Hallelujah. Can you bend over without any problem? Okay. Oh. Jesus' name. I knew nothing, but God did. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God, thank God, thank God. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have any needs? Your eyes. You heard me say that I've seen a lot of blind eyes open. God can do it again. Just raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. Lord, when I lay my hands on her, I want you to lay your hand on her. Be it done, be healed. Name, in your name, in your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. It's happening. I believe it. I believe it. Keep trusting God. Try to see. Try to see. Try to see. Look up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the healer. Sometimes it comes gradually. Sometimes it comes in a minute or two. 
we're going to keep believing. Hallelujah. 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 I'd be, I'd be fine with the pastors just going from one end to the other and praying for people because I'm not going to get all. I'm not going to get to them all. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Have you ever spoken in tongues before? Let it happen again. Now, 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 now. I believe it. 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 Have you ever spoken in tongues before? Let it happen again. Touch him, touch him. Let him overflow. Let him be the bush. Let him be the bush. Let it overflow, and Lord Jesus. Touch him. Either work miracles in the family. come from way off. It comes from way in. Lord Jesus, when I lay my hands on her, I want you to lay your hands on her. Take a deep breath. It's like you're drinking from way inside. Hallelujah. Don't try to say anything in English. Get ready to say something in his language. You believe it? Lord, when I lay my hands on her, I want you to lay your hands on her. I want the power of God to he touch her from the top of her head, the soles of her feet, touch her tongue, I believe you, Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Ghost now. Now, 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 now. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Hallelujah, keep going. He's touching you, he's touching you, he's touching you. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. Come on, lift your hands and worship Him. Come on, lift your hands and worship Him today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I need you. I thank you, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Come on, let's thank Him for healing. Let's thank Him for deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Father, we declare that today. We need you. We need you more than the air that we breathe. We need you more, God, than we need the community and relationship with others. God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch every heart, every mind, every spirit. God, help us, touch us with the realization of what drawing nigh to you means. When you said in your word that if we draw nigh to you, that you would draw nigh to us. God, I've said that so many times, read that so many times. I pray for a revelation, Lord, in our hearts this morning. That as we draw nigh to you, the nearer we get to you, the more we experience you. Help us to hunger for that. Help us to yearn for that, God. And I thank you for it, God. Keep us, keep us, Lord, as we leave this place today and go to our homes and go throughout our busy lives, Lord. Help us not go long without spending time with you. But when we spend time in your presence, that's when we see miracles take place and life begin to make sense. Help us to cast our care upon you, for we know you care for us. We love you and we thank you for what you've done in this place today. And I pray, God, as we walk out today, we'll walk out with great passion and great authority. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Pray as long as you want. Visit. Leave out of this place today. Shake a hand, hug a neck, tell somebody you love them in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for being part of our online community. Keep up to date of what's happening here at LFA Church by liking our Facebook page, following us on Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. For more information, visit LinksonAG.org.